back about oh six years ago or so. I'm not sure just exactly what what time it was, but I think it's about six years ago. This animal skeleton was re recovered from the Cheyenne Valley, about six miles southeast of Cooperstown, six seven miles out there, and uh, uh, the. Uh, we had a local, couple of local fellows that often made a trip to the river after a rainstorm and tried to find uh, arrowheads and things like that and pieces of animal bone or whatever they could find that had washed out into the open after the rainstorm. And then they discovered the nose of this animal sticking out of the shale, which was the type of soil that we have down there by the river, that shale, and uh, they, um, uh, when they realized that there were teeth connected to it, they stopped and immediately called the State Historical Society, and they sent a paleontologist out, and he looked it over and said, yes, you have discovered a mosasaur, an animal that turned out to be 22 and a half feet long. There was a skeleton of the whole thing there as they uncovered it from this shale. It was not hard to get dig through the shale to get at it. They began by taking the head and shoulders of the Mosasar and taking a, digging around it. As you see the fellow digging over there, digging around the, the head of the Mosasar. They put, wrapped it in burlap and then soaked it in plaster of Paris. And when that hardened, they used a tractor and lifted the whole thing out of the ground, put it on a truck and took it out to Bismarck, the State Historical Society building in Bismarck State Museum. And there, uh, along with the rest of the body, which I said, which would be mostly vertebrae, ribs, and the fins, and uh, it's in Bismarck today. What we have here is just a plaster model that they made for us to put here in our museum. A plaster rib that was a, a exact size and a duplicate of what they have out there. And they gave, also made a vertebrae that they included with this. These are uh, in Bismarck today for those who want to go out to the State Museum and see the whole animal put back together again. And uh, that came from Greeks County here, one of the most complete of all skeletons they have found because all body par all bone parts were there. But it was interesting to watch them work because there were, there were a number of cracks in the bones and as they went along and dug it up, he had a bottle of glue and they filled all these cracks with glue to keep it from falling apart. They also uh, uh, were very careful taking it out so that it would, as much of it would uh, uh, come at one time as possible. But 22 and a half feet long. And about three years ago now, they also uncovered a second skeleton out in that area. And that was of a, a, an ocean turtle and that turtle measured eight or nine feet across the shell. So it's huge. And that's in Bismarck as well. We don't have any anything uh, other than a picture of it perhaps here at the museum. People ask, how can an animal like this, that's an ocean animal, be here in North Dakota that's dry and uh, no, no large bodies of water? But at one time, if we look at the map, such as we have back here, this ocean was open through the Gulf of Mexico up through central United States, covering most or all of North Dakota, all the way up to the Gulf of, well, from the Gulf of Mexico there up to the uh, uh, North Pole and up to the uh, area known as the um, Hudson, Hudson Bay area. And so they, they just swam right through here. And when the water receded, the, um, they were trapped here. Eastern North Dakota, when I had this geography, said that one time we were covered by Lake Agassiz, the eastern half of North Dakota. So that's as the water receded into a lake, and then it receded further into rivers. So we have left is the, Cheyenne, the Red River, the Cheyenne River, the Maple River, the James River, and maybe part of the Missouri River from that was once a big body of land. So these animals got trapped, and that's what we're finding skeletons there today.